So what you just heard there is called latency, and this is a really common problem, and it results from the conversion of analog to digital signals and the time it takes your computer and your audio interface to process that information and send it back to your speakers. Now, don't worry. It's not your computer. It's not your processor. It's not your audio interface. It's actually your settings and the way that you're recording. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Whether you're on a student laptop or a high-end gaming PC, you're likely to run into these problems if you don't have the right settings. So let's get right into that. Now, if you're new to recording with computers, make sure you grab an audio interface. There's lots of them available here. You can check out this link and grab something that's within your budget. This way, you can make sure you have the best audio quality and the best processing available for your audio. So after that, grab your instrument, grab some cables, and we can get started. I'm using a four channel audio interface here by iConnectivity. This one works great. It has enough inputs for what I need. And all I need to do is make sure I plug into the right source. Then I want to make sure I set my level on the interface. So here I can just turn this knob to set the gain. Your interface may be a little bit different. And I just want to make sure I'm not clipping, but it's also not too quiet. So somewhere in the middle is just what you want. After that, we're going to head into Ableton. We're going to open our audio options and make sure that your audio interface is selected under the audio inputs. Then make sure if you're on Mac, you also select your output as the same device so you can hear what you're doing as well. Then you may need to check your input configuration options if you have an interface with many, many inputs. So here you can see I just have channels one through four all selected so I can choose a stereo source or I can choose a mono source. Now, I'm just going to close up this menu and show you what the audio track setup looks like. So first of all, make sure you have an audio track loaded up. So here we can right click, insert audio track. I'm just going to rename that to guitar. And then we go down to the bottom right corner here. There's a little button with an I and an O. So that's your inputs and output settings. So make sure you have that open. And we're going to take a look at the audio from section here and make sure that the source or the input that you are using matches the one in Ableton. So for example, I'm using input one on the guitar. So I want input one on the interface as well. Now, right below that, we have a series of buttons for monitoring. Monitoring is a feature that just allows you to hear or not hear the signal that you're recording and play back through your headphones or your speakers while you're recording. So if you're recording vocals and you're comfortable hearing your own voice, you may not need monitoring and you want the setting off. But if you're recording a guitar or an instrument like a synthesizer that doesn't have speakers of their own or doesn't make a sound, then you might actually want to hear what you're playing. So you set this to auto. In is actually used for more live performance use or certain special routings where you, we might need to feed a live signal into Ableton Live without having to do any recording. For our purpose today, we're going to set this to auto, which means we will hear our electric guitar as we're playing it through Ableton. Now, right below that, we have a set of options for audio outputs. But in this case, we can just use the defaults and it'll be more than enough. Now, moving down the track, we actually want to hit this little button on the bottom and arm this track. This just enables the track to record and it's now listening to that live input. So now that everything's hooked up, let's give it a try. What you're hearing is latency once again. And this is because the options in our computer is set a little bit too slow for our processor and audio interface to deliver that signal back to our ears in time with the instrument. So let's go back to Ableton's preferences and change this value here called buffer size. Now all this value is is a kind of amount of data that your computer is processing. And you can tell your computer to process a lot all at once or a little bit at a time. If you choose to process a lot of samples at a time, it will take your computer longer to send back those results to your speakers. So what we want to do is set this value as low as possible during recording. So let's give it a try and turn it down to 64 samples. Now let's close it up and let's have a listen. So you can see this is much better now, but I'm still seeing there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of latency left over. Now, I could set this value a little bit lower, but in my case, I know that I'm going to get some audio pops and clicks and glitches, and I'm sure you've experienced this before, where your computer seems to be overloading because of all the effects, synthesizers, and audio tools that you may have loaded up. Now, when you're recording, you actually want to minimize the number of effects and tools you have in front of that track. So I don't want to have any third party special plugins directly after this guitar, or else I'm going to get more latency from the processing that is involved in that effect. However, there's one more little setting that I can show you. 
Now, if you go over to Live's top menu here under Options, there's a setting called Reduce Latency When Monitoring. So you want to make sure there's a check mark here. And just keep in mind that this setting is only preserved per project file. So every new project file will need to have this enabled unless you make this a default. With that setting checked now, let's have a listen. And now we're really ready for recording, so let's go. So if this was helpful for you, make sure you give us a like, maybe subscribe so you can stay up to date with our content, and make sure you check us out on Instagram and over at faceloop.online. We're gonna have some more free resources over there. There's preset packs, there's some instrument racks, there's some devices and MIDI tools that we're working on that are really exciting for just about every genre. So until next time, we'll see you in the loop.